Hey guys, it's Glenn Matthewson, August 13th, and I was on one of my favorite Facebook groups, International Building Code Geeks, and a question came up that got me pretty excited. It's about fire separation distance for decks. And, you know, I'm pretty involved with deck code, and this question comes up a lot, and it's fun to answer because it's tough to answer. So I decided I'd take a cut out of my course, The Existing Structure. It's an on-demand course available at buildingcodecollege.com. But I'm just gonna take a little clip out of that course for you, tack it on right here so I can answer that question or at least help get the discussion going. This is definitely a code provision that is inconsistently interpreted or figured out across this country. And it's certainly one that I think could use some recognition in the 2024 IRC. So this is both hopefully gonna be educational for you, get you some thoughts going in your mind, prompt some discussions in whatever form or social media site you're watching this, but also I wanna see your feedback of how we can make this more consistent and clear for everybody across this country to have a solid understanding of how we wanna handle decks and fire separation distance. All right. Another thing to be concerned about are setbacks. How close to the property line can the decks or porch roofs be built? And this is something that's gonna be a little bit trickier to find on your own before you go, but definitely something that your building department is going to find out for you or send you over to the planning and zoning division to find out their setbacks. Setbacks can be different from property to property, neighborhood to neighborhood, because they're not really based on any science or statistics that would be consistent among all communities. They're gonna be based on the aesthetics that are expected out of that neighborhood. When you get to building codes and you get to more of the science and statistics regulating construction, what the building code refers to is not setbacks, but the term fire separation distance because the building code is not concerned with the aesthetics of the neighborhood and how the density of the homes and how close they are together for the feel and comfort and property values of the owners. They're concerned with the fire from one house, wiping out the neighboring houses, and then wiping out the whole neighborhood or city. This is literally where building codes began in this country and in other countries. In fact, as a vintage code book collector, I've got to show you this vintage 1808 newspaper that I have. This is near the birth of our country. And in this paper, you have the declarations of Thomas Jefferson, the third US president, stating that no wooden house shall be placed within 24 feet of a brick or stone house. Indeed, at the very birth of this country, we had a few things we were regulating in construction, but one of them is something we call fire separation distance today. So today is a different day than the 1800s. And how do we measure fire separation distance in modern building codes? We measure both properties to a, uh, a declared line. And what this allows is each property owner to have the freedom of construction up from their building measured to that center line. Now, this isn't really designed for decks. Even though decks can indeed catch fire and spread that fire to the house, as you see in this example, decks are not at all addressed in fire separation distance in the IRC currently. And this is something we may see in future years become recognized and addressed in the IRC. Let's go to this table in chapter three, it's table 302.1, and this is the table that explains the fire protection for fire separation distances. You can see the different features listed down the left. Walls, well, last I looked, your common decks don't have walls, so this doesn't speak well to decks. Projections, hmm, often folks try to use projections to regulate decks for fire resist for fire separation distance. But truth be told, it's really, really a stretch. And quite frankly, the provisions in the IRC are not speaking to decks when referring to projections. Take a look at the fire resistance for one that would be required on projections. One hour on the underside. Now the picture I just showed you a minute ago was a ground level deck. And that fire occurred on the surface of the deck. So 
wouldn't really be applicable to decks that may be two stories up in the air or down at ground level. Look at the footnotes further that speak to projection and how you can reduce this one hour rating to zero on the underside of eave or rake overhangs when there is no ventilation into the attic. So again, decks, ventilation into attics, this is really not speaking to decks. What I do wanna say here that is sort of the red flag for deck builders and for building authorities is five feet. Once you're beyond five feet, there's no need to worry yourself anymore because in the IRC, beyond five feet, there are no fire protection requirements. So if we look at this deck, is it a wall? Is it a projection? No. Is it less than five feet measured either to the interior lot line? Because if so, you may want to investigate more of the local requirements and code interpretations. The other place you may measure to, and the red flag to look for in your design, would be in this case. Now this deck is not adjacent in interior property line, so there's no other building out here on the left side of this photo for this deck to spread fire to. And so in this case, the fire separation distance would be measured to the center of the public way. Clearly more than five feet, so nothing that would apply to this deck. The public way doesn't have to be a road. It could also be a green belt like this, where you have a deeded and dedicated piece of land to the public, where the anticipation is there would be no private structures built here, where this deck being too close would restrict the freedom of the other property owner. Now, when you get to this deck, this was my personal experience, where usually the setback requirements from planning and zoning were always greater than five feet, and thus the building department didn't have to figure out how to regulate fire separation distance, something not provided to you currently in the IRC. Well, this one turned out that planning and zoning was gonna allow it to be as close as two feet. And now we were less than that five foot dimension, and now we had a real reason to ask some more questions. Similarly, another discussion would be a deck like this, a freestanding deck that is detached and completely separate from the primary structure on the house. This kind of deck is also not really meant to be addressed by fire separation distance. So if it's detached or attached, but it's less than five feet from the interior property line or from the center of a public way, the guidance to you is simply talk to your building division and discuss with them how they interpret and apply fire separation distance requirements for decks. My name is Glenn Mathewson, and this video was provided to you by buildingcodecollege.com, where we go beyond the words.